Ex Limbrus here, bringing to you my first unboxing and review. Well, as you can tell from the title, I'm unboxing and reviewing the Buffalo Famigum USB controller. From what I've heard, it is the only licensed USB controller. Uh, Buffalo somehow acquired actual, you know, permission from Nintendo in Japan for making the Famicom controller from USB. Well, rather than blathering on, let's get this box open. Here we are with the package. Uh, let's cue in a little bit of surgery music as I get my scalpel. Obviously, since it's from Japan, all the lettering on the box, except for you know the Buffalo logo and some of the labeling that tells you what operating systems are available, you know that it works with, are in Japanese. That includes all of the writing on the back. I have no idea what most of that says. Um, this is obviously instructions on what the buttons do, and some stuff down here, probably saying stuff. <laughs> Anyhow, okay, time to unbox this. Look how shiny it is. Oh, it's awesome. I had a thing for Japanese version of the Nintendo for many a year. It's got the little sticker tabs that hold the box shut. And here we go. Let's a couple of things here. A very nice helpful Japanese instructions on I'm assuming how to install the drivers and map it to an emulator but obviously all in Japanese and here's a business card of some sort There she is, with all of her shiny Famicom glory. I have to admit, you know, considering how much I've wanted this and the long awaitedness of it, I feel kind of like, like how Link felt when he finds a treasure in the dungeons. Okay, okay. All joking aside, why don't we get into the review of this controller? So I came upon this controller in a blog on a website called AlienCyborgs.com. And just by looking at it, I knew I wanted it right then. 
but upon reading the blog, I knew I absolutely had to have it. So Alien Cyborgs suggested a website called usbbrando.com, but their price of 22 US dollars seemed a little bit steep to me. So I headed over to eBay, where I found it for a marginally cheaper price of 17 US dollars with free shipping. It arrived less than two weeks later. So, as I mentioned, the, these controllers were produced in 2007 by Buffalo, who actually received license for design from Nintendo. They produced a Super Famicom version as well. They sold for about $35 brand new at first release date. Lucky for me, the price has gone down instead of up over the passing years since they first released these controllers. Installing a controller for, on a Windows PC is as easy as plugging it in and letting Windows find the driver software. However, if you're a Mac user, you're going to need a third-party software called USB Overdrive X to get it going and running with your NES or SNES emulator software. There are some notable differences between the original Famicom controller and the Buffalo USB controller. First thing I noticed was that the original controller had larger action buttons, but this makes sense. Because they added the X and Y buttons on the Buffalo controller, they had to size down the B and A buttons. However, the buttons are still very comfortable to use. There is also the addition of the turbo and clear buttons, making it possible to set any button on the controller to turbo fire and clearing it within a matter of seconds. It's as easy as holding the button and pressing either turbo or clear. Another notable difference are the left and right shoulder buttons built into the beveled edge off the top of the controller. The addition of the X and Y buttons and the shoulder buttons make it perfect for both NES and SNES emulation. Now with the addition of the turbo function, this controller is more akin to the Hudson Turbo Famicom controller. And with the additional buttons for SNES gameplay, it's like a combination of the two. And in my head, I imagine the birth of the Buffalo controller, kind of like this. The controller itself is very solid and isn't made of lightweight cheap plastic and all the buttons have the correct amount of give and responsiveness you would expect from an official NES or SNES controller. The way they made the shoulder buttons look like just part of the controller's beveled edge kept the addition of those buttons from taking away from the overall Famicom controller appearance. All in all, a very well made controller and worth the money of the purchase. Now that we've reviewed the controller, why don't we hook her up and take her for a test run? Mapping the Buffalo controller to an emulator is simple and straightforward. Here I'm using Nestopia as an example, but it's pretty much the same process in any emulator. You just set each button as it's marked and click the OK button to finish it off.
So there you have it, the Buffalo Famicom USB controller. I'd recommend it to any retro gamer who uses emulators. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Thank you.